Hello dear students, this is Business Research Methods and Project Work Course Tutorial. This is Tutorial 2.5. The topic of this tutorial, Selection of Research Methods and here I will particularly discuss upon existing data-based research. The learning objectives are to understand existing database research, to know the sources of existing data, to know when to use existing database research, to know the advantages and limitations of existing database research, and to learn the differences between primary research and existing database research. Students, you might have heard the word data. Data that is the information in quantitative form or in numerical form. Now existing data means those data and information which are already been collected by some other. And if the research is based on those past data, then it can be called as existing data based research. And the more popular word is secondary research. So studies done using existing data or secondary data is called existing database research. It is also known as secondary research or desk research as data can be retrieved from sitting behind a desk. It involves reanalyzing, interpreting and reviewing past data. This research includes research material published in research reports and similar documents. These documents can be made available by public libraries, websites, data obtained from already filled in survey, etc. Some government and non-government agencies also store data that can be used for research purposes and can be retrieved from them. Here is a list of some sources classification. Now the sources of existing data or the secondary data can be classified broadly into two. One is internal source and the other is external source. In internal sources specifically or particularly in case of say marketing farm or for a business farm various data are already available within the organization. So that is called internal source such as accounting or financial data records then sales force report then there may be other reports like consumer data reports then miscellaneous reports and another is internal experts. So internal experts means those people associated with the organization who have expertise in a particular field of study. So from them also some data and information can be retrieved. So these are some of the internal sources. Then external sources, this can be again classified as government publication, non-government publication, then policy research institution, media houses, libraries and archives, publications from international organization. So in government publication, you will find there are various departments and various institutions which conduct various surveys and reports are available. Say you can talk about Registrar of India. So there you will find census data. Then RBI, which is an organization, you know, organization that is a regulatory institution for all the banking institution in our country. So in RBI site, if you visit there, you will find some statistics and data and many reports are also available there. Then in non-government publication, again, there are industry and trade associations. So they may release various newsletters and they may also conduct surveys and release various reports. Then there are academic and research institutions who, where students and the research scholar conduct various researches and publish their dissertation. So from those also data and information can be retrieved. Then there are again syndicated services, services uh, from some research organization or firms. Then consumer research services are also there. So from them also 
data and information can be purchased. Then there are policy research institutions like National Council of Applied Economic Research. Then there are organizations here in our state you will find like Omiyo Kumar Das Institute of Social Change and Development. So these are policy research institutions. They used to conduct various research and those research reports are published. So from those also you can retrieve data. Then media houses like radio stations, TV channels, these are also good source for secondary data. Then libraries are there, archives are there, from there also data can be sourced. Then publications of international organization. So you know about various international organization like World Trade Organization from where you can retrieve data related to trades, external trade, internal trades and many other things related to it. Then there are organizations like World Bank, International Monetary Fund and many other international organizations which used to conduct research and there you will find data warehouses and you can retrieve data from those organizations. So this data may be available in reports, books, journals, newspaper, newsletter, data set and such materials either in physical or print format or electronic format or both the format. Some of those data can be obtained by paying a minimal fees and some other data are open access data. Open access data means those data are available for all. There is no restrictions in getting the data. So the sources of secondary data or existing data I will discuss elaborately in another tutorial. Now use of existing database research. Through existing database research, researcher can identify the gaps in existing knowledge. It helps researcher in planning primary research, say determining the data collection method, designing the tools for data collection, choosing the target population, determining the sample method and size, and in many aspects, existing data or existing information may help the researcher. Then existing data is summarized and collated to increase the overall effectiveness of research. That means secondary data, oh sorry, secondary research or this existing database research can be done with primary research also. Both quantitative and qualitative study is possible through existing data. Now, if the researcher thinks that readily available data is enough to find answer to research question, then the researcher can proceed to adopt existing database research. There are three general approaches in using existing data. Those are secondary data analysis, ancillary studies, and systematic reviews. Now what is a secondary data analysis? It is the use of existing data to investigate research question other than the main ones for which the data were originally gathered. Ancillary studies aid one or more measurements to a study often in a subset of the participant to answer a separate research question. Systematic review that it combines the result of multiple previous studies of a given research question, often including calculation of a summary estimate of effect that has greater precision than the individual study estimates. A systematic review uses a well-defined approach to identify all relevant studies, display the characteristics and result of eligible studies. The statistical aspect of a systematic review that is calculating summary effect estimates and variance, statistical taste of heterogeneity and statistical estimates of publication bias, all these are called meta-analysis. 
The systematic review can be combined with primary research also. It can be helpful for framing the questionnaire also. Now let's discuss the process of existing database research. Now you as a beginner can also undertake existing database research. So how will you proceed? The first stage is identify the topic of research or develop research question. So here you need to identify the topic or the research question. After that, list down the research attributes and its purpose. The next stage is identify research sources or identify secondary data set. So here you narrow down on the information sources that will provide most relevant data and information applicable to the research. Third stage is collecting existing data. Once the data collection sources are narrowed down, that means you are filtering now. Check for any previous data that is available which is closely related to the topic. Data related to research can be obtained from various sources like newspaper, public libraries, government and non-government agencies, etc. that I have already discussed. Care should be taken that data collected is from authentic sources. Stage 4 is evaluating the secondary data set. Evaluate the secondary data set by considering various issues like what was the aim of the original study? Who has collected the data? Which measures were employed? When was the data collected? What methodology was used to collect the data? Whether the sample size was sufficient or not? Missing values were in acceptable level or not? Co-founders were controlled or not? Analysis was appropriate or not? So all this need to be considered. And in this slide, the data set need to be evaluated. Then again make a final evaluation so as to ensure sufficiency of the data set. The next stage is combining, comparing and preparing the secondary data. If there are data that are collected from more than one source, then it needs to be combined and compare the data for any duplication and assemble data into a usable format. Outline all variables of interest, transfer data to a new file, address missing data, recode variables, calculate final scores. So these are the things you need to do. And the last stage is analyzing the data and preparing the report. So after assembling the data, analysis is to be done. It is to be identified if all the research questions are answered or not. If not, the process need to be repeated. So this is about the process of existing database research. Now here I am going to discuss the advantages of existing database research. In this type of research, information or data is readily available. And if the data is professionally collected, so this is a merit point for the researcher. Then this is less expensive and less time consuming. A minimal expenditure is associated to obtain data. Since here the researcher need not put much effort for giving training to enumerators or need not visit the field and therefore the expenditure can be kept minimal. Again, because of availability of data, existing database research can be conducted quickly and in less effort. So half of the work is not required here in existing database research. Say how to 
design the questionnaire or the data collection tool then how to visit the field how to train the enumerators so all this work need not have to do here in secondary research and therefore the it possible in less effort then it provides the idea which supports the primary research so this is another advantage if the researcher is planning to undertake primary research that time also a secondary research or existing database research is required to gain various aspects of the problem then this research method is also not away from limitations there are many limitations like data available may not be reliable or the sources may not be authentic then data available may be redundant or not updated again secondary research derives its conclusion from collective primary research data therefore the result of the existing database research is dependent upon the quality of research already conducted by primary research so if the primary research have not been done in appropriate manner then the result that is drawn through secondary research which is again based upon those primary research there may be some drawbacks then the available data may not be in the measurement scale in which required by the researcher for secondary research it means the one who undertakes secondary research have low control on the measurement now let's make a comparison of primary research and secondary research or existing database research till now you have learned what is existing database research then you have also learned the advantages and disadvantages so it is definite that you can make a comparison of primary research and existing database research in primary research it involves collecting factual first hand data at the time of the research project existing database research involves the use of data that was collected by somebody else in the past in primary research the data are real time data whereas in case of existing database research the data are past data primary research is conducted by the researcher himself or herself but in case of existing database research it is conducted by somebody else primary research address specific needs of the researcher existing database research may not directly address the researcher's needs in primary research the researcher is highly involved in existing database research relatively the researcher is less involved primary research completion time is to be long whereas in case of existing database research completion time is relatively short the cost associated with primary research is high whereas in case of existing database research it is low so this is all about existing database research now these are the sources from where i have collected the information that i have presented in the slides so with this i am wrapping up today's tutorial thank you